I would ask the inter members to self-introduce themselves. Lisa Stevens, South Asheville. Jim Guido, Beaver Dam. James Wilson, South Asheville. <laughs> Peggy Nan, Limestone. John Yurko, Weaverville. David Zummy, South Asheville. Lori Camerata, Beaver Dam. All right. You recently received a copy of the minutes of the last meeting. Are there any corrections? <coughs> Hearing none, the minutes will be uh, posted as submitted. If you're going to testify today, you'll have to be sworn in. So at this time, would you come forward? One of you put your hand on, or more, put your hand on the Bible, and the rest put the hand on the shoulder of the person, and I will swear you in. Okay, do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? All right. Okay, Josh, should we proceed with number one? Uh, yes, sir. I just want to note one change to the agenda. Um, we have switched the positions of Carolina Specialty Construction um, and the appeal of Mr. Raines um, just to help facilitate the first two conditional use permits um, and to allow adequate time for the public um, comment and quasi judicial process for the Raines proceeding. Okay, that's fine. The first case you have before you is ZPH 2011-00080. It's on behalf of Alpha Tactical LLC. They've applied for a conditional use permit for retail trade pursuant to section 78-677 and 78-678 of the zoning ordinance of Buncombe County in order to site a retail sales location in an existing structure located on tax lot pin number 9643877804 at 15 Loop Road, Suite B. Um, this site is an existing uh, business park commercial development um, with the, the zoning designation in that area now. It makes retail sales a conditional use. Um, we've had no public comment for or against this particular application. All right. Who is presenting for the applicant? Okay, what's your name, please? I'm Dan Davis. Okay, sir, you need to Okay, then why don't you come up here, Dan, so we can hear you. My name's Dan Davis. I represent Alpha Tactical. I'm uh, one third owner in the business. All right. Please tell us what you intend to do. Well, the primary purpose of our business is that we are a training uh, entity. We also uh, operate under the name of Alpha Training Group. Uh, we have the primary purpose of training uh, in the areas of emergency preparedness. We train in CPR, we train in first aid, we train in the use of automatic defibrillators. We also train in the areas of self-defense, uh, which includes um, handgun safety. We also are certified to train in the North Carolina concealed carry handgun permits. Uh, we really don't have any intention of becoming a a large retailer. Our primary purpose of wanting to offer retail at this location is to offer items that coincide or complement the training that we do. For example, if we're training a group of individuals in CPR and first aid, we want to be able to allow them to purchase a first aid kit or an emergency preparedness kit for their car. Likewise, if they're for, there for self-defense training, whether it is a safety lock for their handgun, a handgun itself, a holster, or those kind of items. Um, all the individuals that are involved in this business, we are three full-time employees elsewhere. Uh, this is kind of a side business for us. We're not actually even open. We don't have open hours. Uh, the only hours that we are there are the hours that we are there to train, which uh, typically are after hours because, uh, we, again, each one of us work nine to five jobs. So there, we're there from 6 p.m. on, on weeknights, as well as Saturdays. We do a, most of our training on Saturdays. We also do do some training outside, uh, which is irrelevant to the case today, but we do go into doctor's office, dentist's office, and things like that, and recertify nurses and practitioners in, in the area of CPR. Okay. How many people uh, would come in in a typical class? 
I'm assuming you're our typical classes right now range from 10 to 12. We have two classrooms and they're depicted in some of the pictures there but our, our maximum basically in our two classrooms our maximum capacity if both classes were full would be about 24 people. And if the business were to go as you, you would like it to go would that be every evening and on Saturday? I don't know that I would want to be there every evening. Well, I'm, you know, I'm just trying to get a but feel sure. of what, what, what uh, Every Saturday, me. we would love to have classes every Saturday. Uh, and again, um, it, it's pretty much in line with what's what's been done there in the past. There are, I think, 41 parking spaces. So if each individual that was <coughs> represented there were to drive individually in their own car, we would still have ample parking. There are no other businesses. Uh, in, inside this particular location that actually operate on Saturday. The, the people that are there generally operate from 9 to 5 Monday through Friday. Is this a, is this a relatively new type of business in our county here? Is there, are there other? Don't know of any other. There's a similar business in Waynesville, uh, Carolina Readiness and Preparedness, uh, that teaches some of the same things that we do. But it's a relatively new new business business concept. Any other questions, comments? No. I don't think so. I'm, there's no chance there'll be a firing range or anything. In no this. chance. Okay. Not that that makes any difference. I just curious. sure. There, there's no area for that. Actually, we have property that's located in Henderson County that we do any of the okay. the actual firing range training at. Any other questions, comments from the people? Is there anyone else who would like to comment or be heard on this? Okay, at this time I will close the public hearing. Board members, discussion, motion. Mr. Chair, based upon the evidence presented to this board, including the, 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 the petitioner's application, the submitted development plan, the GIS map, the findings of fact and worksheet, I move that this board adopt the following findings of fact, items A through 5. As this application does meet the requirements for granting a conditional use permit for a PUD for the following reasons, um, Okay, is there a second to that motion? I'll second it. Okay. There's been a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Who, who seconded the motion? Thank you. Guido. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Let the minutes show there was unanimous decision to approve the application. Thank you. Oh, one more, one more thing. <laughs> Mr. Davis. Yes. Uh, is right. the information you have presented to the board true and accurate to the best of your knowledge and belief? Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Mr. Chair, just a reminder now that you have eight board members present, um, one of the alternates will need to abstain from voting. voting. Okay. Is Lisa the uh, alternate? Who's the alternate today? David and Lisa are. Doesn't ever want to. Who wants to observe? Doesn't matter. Okay. Lisa, we'll let you. We'll let you relax today. You can. Okay. Cool. <laughs> okay. Josh. Sure. The next case you have before you is ZPH 2011-00084. Uh, this pertains to Carolina Specialty Construction uh, applying for a conditional use permit in the name of Borg Warner pursuant to Section 78-677 and Section 78-678 of the Zoning Ordinance of Buncombe County in order to um, allow for site additions to the existing industrial buildings on tax lot 9634 57 6860 at 1849 Brevard Road. Uh, the reason this is considered a plan unit development is the site is currently over the 35,000 square foot threshold so any additions um, to a building of that nature require approval as a plan unit development. Um, we've had no negative public comment about this issue. Um, we did encounter some citizens that were inquiring about it when we presented our 
sustainability plan in Avery's Creek, and after um, informing them what the applicant intends to do, they were generally in favor of the proposed development. All right. Who will be presenting? Speaking today, you need to speak into the microphone and you need to spell your name for me, okay? okay if you have a chair there. And Thank you. Presentation. Again, my name is Ken Stubbs, S T U B B S, and I'm with Carolina Specialties Construction Company, and we're the general contractor for the Borg Warner projects. Uh, Borg Warner, as you know, is located, as you know, may have seen in papers presented to you, they're a rather large company on 80 acres of property uh, on Brevard Road, and they have approximately 12.5% of that property in uh, improved industrial facility, and they're wanting to make two additions uh, to their existing facility. One is a 2,650 square foot addition to their technical building, and the other is an 8,425 square foot building that will be used for maintenance to support the larger structures that are there. And um, we have gone through all the par permitting process and now before you board for approval. In other words, this is a relatively small change. To it's that. a very, very, very small <laughs> amount to a, feet, right? to a very nice, very well-maintained facility in the county. I might say, Mr. Chairman, that we do have two board members, a board warner uh, employees here that might ask any, answer any questions that you might have if that's necessary. All right. This is, uh, we'll leave that. Is there anyone else who would like to present or make their case regarding this? The application says uh, that no new parking is required. Is that, um, <clears throat> has that been checked out by y'all's office? That's correct. Since it's, um, generally within the footprint of what exists now and it's a functionality expansion um, our view of the area is that adequate parking exists per the zoning ordinance okay. Good. Questions or comments? all right at this time I'm going to close the public hearing and mr. Stubbs I would ask is the information you have provided to the board true and accurate to the best of your knowledge and belief it is sir Mr. Chairman, based on the evidence presented to this board, including the following exhibits, the petitioner's application, submitted development plans, the GIS map, the findings of fact worksheet, I move that the board adopt the following findings of fact, numbers one through five. This application does meet the requirements for granting a conditional use permit for a HUD for the following reasons, A through N. Uh, X A through U. U. Yeah. No, w. A through W. W. Government <laughs> through to the end. We <laughs> soon will be in double letters. Is there a second to that motion? A second. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Let the minutes show with unanimous vote. Uh, and now we need a motion to approve the denied application. I move that uh, based on the foregoing findings of fact and for the reasons set forth therein, I move that the requested variance be approved. Is there a second? A second. All right. There's been a motion and a second to approve the application. Further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? 
Let the minutes show there was unanimous support of the submission. All right. Thank so you, Mr. Chairman and board members. Issues. Thank you for your consideration. <laughs> Mr. Chair, did you want me to go through the procedure that we're going to be following for yes, the next issue? Yes, if you issue? would do that for the next one. There were, this is a little special thing that we don't handle often, so we're going to review our procedure of how we handle this. So, Josh, if you would take the floor, please, and do that. All right, this is ZPH 2011-00081. Um, Robert Raines and Pamela Guthrie have made an appeal to the decision of the zoning administrator pursuant to Section 78-623 of the Zoning Ordinance of Buncombe County regarding the operation of a business other than a home occupation on tax lot pin number 9732141992 at 111 Hidden Falls Drive. Just to review the procedure for the board and the members of the audience, um, we'll be providing a staff presentation. Um, we have some additional suppl supplementary information that you'll be receiving in a few minutes. Um, and staff will call witnesses um, that have voice their backing for, uh, for the, the notice of violation. Um, after each witness has spoken, the chair will allow the petitioner or petitioner's attorney, um, which is Mr. Rain's attorney, to cross-examine each of those witnesses. Staff will also um, ask that all documents presented be entered into the record. Um, so anything that's presented to the Board of Adjustment will be provided for the permanent record and you will not receive those documents back. After staff has presented all the information, staff will rest, rest and the chair will allow the petitioner and the petitioner's attorney to present evidence to the board. Um, staff will be allowed to cross-examine each witness presented by staff and the petitioner ask, will ask that all documents be presented um, as part of the record. After the petitioner has presented his or her information, the petitioner shall rest. The board will close the hearing and label all evidence entered into the record. The board may allow each side to give a closing statement. The board will deliberate and make findings of facts, conclusions of law, and either affirm or overrule the zoning administrator's determination. Um, just another note, anybody that presents at this hearing um, or in this proceeding will be subject to cross-examination by either side. So I want to make sure everybody understands that before they, they come up to the podium. All right. Has everyone got the understanding? And Both up here I and out there. One other thing, the, the issues before us for the board is solely on whether or not this property is a home occupation. So anything that does not relate to whether this is a home occupation or what is not relevant and should not be considered. So I would instruct everybody who's going to come up and testify to basically keep it on the issues and I don't think not you know, bring in other things that are relevant. In the packet that uh, Mason just handed you, um, there's a four-page four letter um, to the Buncombe County Board of Adjustment, which is uh, a memo re regarding uh, just general statements of fact for this appeal. Um, I'll, I'll give you a brief synopsis of it, but I'll also allow the board time to review that memo and then ask any questions regarding what's there. Um, this complaint originated on March 22, 2011, um, and it has been ongoing until August 16, 2011. Um, <coughs> the decision was delayed in this case for several factors, um, and I'll just run through those very quickly. Um, when we originally received the complaint, uh, Mr. Raines was in possession of a valid building permit on his property for the placement or the replacement of a HUD-labeled manufactured home, and I believe you have a copy of that building permit in front of you. Um, upon initial receipt of the complaint, I spoke with Mr. Raines, uh, and his activities at that time were in line with what would generally be expected um, on an active construction site. Um, following the closure of that complaint or of that permit, I continued to receive complaints about Mr. Raines' use of the, his property on Hidden Falls Drive. Um, as Kurt mentioned, um, several of these complaints were centered around. Um, the use of a private lane, um, not entirely focused on a zoning issue. So some of those complaints um, 
we don't have any jurisdiction over as as a planning department because they fall outside of the purview of the zoning ordinance our department investigated on several occasions um, in the packet before you you have photos taken by our planning technician and um, zoning inspector Dane Peterson and those photos were taken on May 25th and June 27th 2011 um, I will note that when Mr. Peterson encountered Mr. Raines on May 25th, he was actively engaged in paving the property, so the presence of paving equipment, asphalting equipment was requisite at that time. Uh, throughout the course of the investigation, um, our department has asked for visual evidence or any type of written evidence that could um, substantiate the neighbor's complaints regarding the use of the property as a use other than home occupation. Um, to date, we've received photographs that were presented by, um, originally by a Byron Gaynor, um, and then by Jackie Weinreich. Um, there are four total photographs, and I believe the board has those available as well. Um, over the course of the investigation, we continue to ask neighbors to present any evidence that they had that could confirm or deny any specific use of the property. Um, but most of the evidence that we received was verbal, um, other than those, those photographs that you have before you. Um, at, at one point during the investigation, um, we kind of felt like we had the issue resolved. Um, I spoke with some of the property owners that had originated the complaint. Um, and it, it seemed that it had subsided, which is another factor that um, has caused this decision to drag out. Um, beginning about August, um, we had some renewed interest in the complaints. Um, and after speaking with all the parties involved, including Mr. Raines, um, I issued a notice of violation. <coughs> a notice of violation, like I've stated before, is based largely on the, the photographic evidence um, that we received. I do want to state for the board that there's not a large volume of evidence in this particular case, um, and one of the reasons for, for issuing the, the notice of violation was to allow all the vested parties um, the opportunity to, become, to come before the Board of Adjustment and have the case heard in a quasi-judicial format. Um, with it dragging on as long as it, it has, um, we wanted to find some ultimate resolution for the case and with the mechanisms that, that we had for the zoning ordinance, it, it didn't look like we were going to reach that at, at any point. So that weighed into the decision to issue a notice of violation. Um, there are several interpretation issues that I've identified um, pertaining to the use of the property as a home occupation that the board will need to consider. Um, one is with respect to home occupations and the storage of personally owned assets, the zoning ordinance does not provide clear guidance regarding whether an individual can park a business vehicle at their residence. For example, if an individual has a tractor or a box truck in the operation of their business, what rights do they have to store the property at their place of residence? Um, Mr. Raines owns several vehicles as exhibited in the tax records that you have before you. Uh, these vehicles are registered as personal property rather than business property. If his business is ruled as outside the standards of the, the home, of a home occupation, the zoning ordinance provides us with few mechanisms to mandate that he remove the vehicles. Um, so we need the Board of Adjustment to consider that and, and how the zoning ordinance um, would allow us to work with that issue. Um, you also have a full copy of the standard of home occupation. Um, section 78641 states that no traffic shall be generated by home occupation in greater volumes than would normally be expected in a residential neighborhood. Um, I wanted to identify that I've conducted some research into what is a traffic volume considered in a, normal in a residential neighborhood. Um, engineering standards place that at around 10 trips a day, although there's considerable um, variability in that and, and just to define a trip a, a trip is anytime someone leaves the residence or anytime someone returns to the residence and that's just based off average engineering studies um, there have been several references to the presence of a dumpster on Mr. Raines's property while a dumpster is not common for a residential use it is not explicitly banned either um, he's 
justified the use of that dumpster um, for economic reasons and why there may be some correlation. Um, there's nothing that pertains specifically to a dumpster. Um, in addition, there's been references to the volume of paving on the property, and again, the zoning ordinance in that particular district doesn't dictate impervious surface or the installation of asphalt. Um, we've already addressed the issues about the private drive. I just ask that the, the board um, make sure that none of that bleeds into this case. Um, and that pretty much concludes um, my statements on the case. I, I have tried to look into the case regarding um, NC Department of Commerce business standards and vehicle registration. Um, and from my com conversations with the Department of Commerce, um, there's, there's nothing that would require him um, that I've identified yet to register those vehicles as specific to a business. So. All right. Uh, Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Mr. O'Connor. <coughs> Mr. Connor, Mr. O'Connor, thank you for your summary of what's transpired today. Sir, can you state your name and how to spell it, please? Excuse me. It, my name is Stephen Barnwell, spelled S-T-E-P-H-E-N, Barnwell, B-A-R-N-W-E-L-L. -L. Mr. Connor, thank you for your summary of the evidence. Uh, if, if I may, I would like to mark as Petitioner's Exhibit 1 correspondence that was was received by Mr. Raines and ask you if you recognize this. Uh, yes, sir. And if uh, I might refer, the board also has a copy of that letter in their packet. Okay. Um, the letter is dated August 2nd. Um, it's titled uh, Notice of Violation Follow-Up. Um, this letter corresponds specifically to um, a March 23rd, 2001 Notice of Violation, um, which was following up to the original complaint. Um, the original complaint alleged that Mr. Raines was using his property as a, a storage and warehousing yard. Um, after searching the zoning ordinance and the general classification of storage and warehousing, um, it was determined that it, it didn't fall within that use, that storage and warehousing is, is typically reserved for a, a larger industrial type use. Um, the following notice of violation that was issued on August 16th um, pertains specifically to Uh, use of the property as a home occupation and stands independently of the original March 23rd notice of violation. Okay. Prior to your, your correspondence of August 2, 2011, did you do any investigation to determine if, in fact, uh, other than uh, as to whether or not Mr. Brains was using the property for storage and warehousing, did you investigate any other aspect of a home business? Um, our investigation was largely photographic. Um, there were two instances where Mr. Peterson, our department's inspector, um, went out and photographed the property. Um, we've also done some initial investigation into corporate registration of the, of the, the business um, and, and tried to trace it to a particular address. Okay, when you submitted your correspondence of August 2, 2011, would it be a correct statement that you had no other evidence that would substantiate that Mr. Raines was in violation of the ordinance with respect to the R1 classification? Um, no, as I said before, these are, are, are two different notices of violation. Um, I ended the one referring to the storage and warehousing. Um, as I said before, based on the fact that I didn't feel there was sufficient justification or evidence for that particular use. Um, but we continue to receive complaints regarding his his use of the property as a home occupation, so that complaint was ongoing until um, the issuance of the August 16th notice of violation. Okay, your, your correspondence of August 16th, the notice of violation, essentially concludes that he is violating the ordinance by conducting a occupation that is in violation of the home occupation. Is that correct? That is correct. And in that correspondence, you set forth the factors that uh, 
were to be considered in regarding the uh, uh, what a home what exceeds the uh, definition of a home occupation? Did you not? Are you referring to the second paragraph beginning second with paragraph, first? That's yes, that's what the zoning ordinance states. Okay. Now, do you do you have any evidence to the contrary that the residence that is on the property, which is the subject matter of this matter, is being used? Only incidentally or, and, or, or secondary for business purpose. Do you do you know if it is primary residential? Uh, our understanding is it is primary re primarily residential. Okay, during your investigation, did you did you uh, find any display or outside storage or change in appearance of the building or the premises that would be visible evidence of a conduct of uh, home occupation and or any other occupation? Um. As I stated in, in my original summary of the, of the, of the case, um, the issue revolves largely around the, the use of the vehicles on the property um, and how that corresponds to the definition of a home occupation. Okay. How, how many vehicles do you, it, it, did you discover that were being used in what you deem to be your, a, uh, an occupation? Give me just one second to flip through the photographs here. Um, as identified to the board, it's, it's difficult to, to make that in determination since the vehicles are privately registered as to whether um, their presence on the property at any particular time corresponds directly to the business. Um, if you refer to the pictures that were submitted by Brian Greiner and Jackie Weinreich um, that were taken um, between 325 and 328 p.m. on 6-3-2011. Um, it appears that there are two vehicles um, that can be identified as labeled in that picture. The other um, potential labeling is obscured at that point. <clears throat> Could you discuss with Mr. Raines his use of these, these vehicles, the trucks in particular? On multiple occasions, yes, sir. And, and what, if anything, did he tell you he did in terms of operating those vehicles and his use? My understanding is that he, he uses these vehicles both as personal vehicles and um, in, con in conjunction with the business as necessary. But um, as is present in the tax um, records, um, several of the vehicles that, that was, were presented to the board are, are also um, wouldn't seem to fit within the context of an asphalt paving operation as their SUV type vehicles or uh, sedan cars or sports cars. Did you observe any traffic in excess of, of his exiting and re-entering his premises on a daily basis? Uh, no, sir. We've been unable to devote staff time to conducting road traffic counts. Um, so we, we have no evidence pertaining to the volume of traffic that would be in conjunction with this business. Did you observe any equipment or process being carried on on the property? Um, as I noted on the, the May 25th inspection, um, at that time the, the, the property was being paved. Um, so it would be expected that paving equipment would be used for that. But other than that occasion, have you observed any processes being conducted on the property? Or other, do you know uh, of any? I, not to my knowledge, other than the storage of equ related equipment. Now, it's your contention that, that the property, or maybe not your contention, but your finding that the property is used as a staging area. Is there a definition that you apply for a staging area? No. Can you refer me to a specific document? Well, so I might have the, a little uh, bit more your, context. The correspondence of uh, August 16th, third paragraph. <clears throat> The uh, third line says using your property as a staging area for business purposes. Um, that stems largely from um, the complaints that were received by the neighborhood um, as, as well as, as the presence um, in the photographs submitted of, of vehicles that could be con used in conjunction with an asphalt and, operation. And what, what additional traffic do you contend was created by his business operation. 
Um, from the statements that we've received from neighbors, um, the complaints allege that employees are arriving on site in the morning and then removing the, the, the equipment um, to, to go to paving jobs, I would presume, and then returning at the end of each day and then leaving in their personal cars. Thank you. Mr. Chair, um, I have two individuals that I've had previous conversations with, um, so I'd like to call those um, individuals in order. Um, I believe Ms. Jackie Weinreich and um, her fiance are here to speak um, relative to the case. We also have photographs we took yesterday. Ma'am, everyone needs to speak into Hello. the microphone. My name is Jacqueline Weinreich. You ready? J-A-C-Q-U-E-L-I-N-E, -E, last name W-E-I-N-R-E-I-C-H. Um, before I get started, we drove in early yesterday and took additional photographs um, to further support our, our, our findings or our feelings, and we'd like to provide copies to everyone. Fine. Do you have a copy from this person? We do. We do. Yeah, of course. Another copy? We can share one. I'll give you this one. When I'm done, you can have this one. I took those photographs yesterday because they are the address on the North Carolina Department of the Secretary of State website as being the business address for A Quality Paving. Say again what they are, please. The that is the address of the business address for A Quality Paving as listed on the North Carolina Department of the Secretary of State as their legal business address. And that's which pictures? It's the final two pictures. I'm showing you Shelba Drive, which is clearly a mobile home park, and the final photograph is 133 Shelba Drive, which is a single residential zoned R3 mobile home. That is shown as his legal business address. Is that the same? That's not the same property though that's, that we're making yes, a judgment on. I'm just showing that he's showing a legal business address that is in a mobile home park and that's also not zoned. I, I, my, my goal was to find a commercial address where he could pop, you know, oh, could you just move your vehicles there was our goal. And right. when I pulled in, I saw a mobile home park. I see. Okay. So this is different than this is a different address. That's correct. It's his legal business address, which is a mobile home park. And I, I will state for the board's clarification, um, Typically, from a zoning ordinance perspective, um, the registered address of a business is not something we typically look at, um, largely because Buncombe County does not require any type of business privilege license. Um, we only look at 
where the business is, is currently in operation, which in this particular case would be um, the contested piece of property. Is well, that address that you show in those last pictures in the vicinity of this? No, it's in Candler. Well, as this board has a great latitude at what it will admit. I, my, my advice to the board would be if you feel that this is relevant and add something is, 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 is relevant to the discussions that we're having that you'd admit it. Yeah, I, I'm going to allow that it, that it be admitted. Thank you. Ms. Weinreich, if you, if you could, for the, the board, uh, just proceed to explain um, why you feel that this is not a home occupation. Why I feel that A, quality paving is not a home occupation? Well, can I go through my presentation? I do so in the process. Is that okay? Okay. Um, well, good afternoon, and thank you for the opportunity to come and speak. Uh, my fiance, Mark, and I drove here from Florida to speak on this issue. A little bit of background. In 2008, we traveled um, through several communities looking for a place to buy property on which to build our dream home. We fell in love with Buncombe County, specifically Weaverville. Um, we met with a, a well-established and knowledgeable realtor in the area, his name's Byron Greiner, and I had three stipulations. I wanted three and a half acres at least, I wanted a large creek, and I wanted it to be zoned R1. I've developed several properties in Murphy, North Carolina, which is Cherokee County, and I'm very well aware of zoning ordinances and how powerful they can be. So he showed us several pieces. We fell in love with Hidden Falls Drive. We fell in love with the area. We fell in love with the 4.7 acres on the beautiful Reams Creek. And we purchased that property and closed in December of 2008. Since then, we've traveled here many times to just drive around and get to know the area and sit down by our creek and watch the ducks go by. Um, this past year when we came up, um, we drove up our quiet one lane road and were horrified to see that the lot across from us had been leveled and paved. So we took photographs. It was apparent to us that Mr. Raines and Ms. Guthrie were running a business, a paving business. And I was very well aware it was owned R1 and I'm curious as to why someone can run a business in a residential area. Now to start with the photos, I understand the road is not your jurisdiction. We just wanted to show you, this is from Hidden Stock, looking onto Hidden Falls, or from New Stock Road, looking onto Hidden Falls, and it's a private one-lane road. And the fact that I'm showing you the one-lane road, the second photograph shows a typical vehicle going up the road so that you can see how narrow, in fact, this road is. And in many cases, there's nowhere on either side of the road to go if a large vehicle comes down the road. Now, the other thing that it's hard to tell is that there are two blind hills, I'm talking steep hills, where you don't see what's coming until you get to the top of the hill. Yes, Ms. Weinreich, if we can, we, we really need to... I'm, I'm getting there. Well, I, I understand that, but you're being called as the county's witness. Okay. And what we're going to ask you, and, and the zoning administrator is going to ask you specific questions okay. to answer this question. Okay. If you get to page four, the the lane goes all the way to the end. If you get to the end of, uh, on page four, at the end of the road on the right is 111 Hidden Falls. Or, yeah, Hidden Falls. And what Mr. Raines and Ms. Guthrie have done is they brought in fill dirt and they leveled the entire lot and they paved the entire front of it and basically made it a parking lot. And in the very bottom right corner, you can see the edge of their mobile home and what looks like their personal vehicles. And then farther down, you see two trucks clearly, clearly marked with A-quality paving there's also a dump truck with a very large trailer of paving equipment. And on the other side of that, further photographs will show that there are two other large pickup trucks marked A-quality paving with large um, trailers behind them. There are several photographs showing this. Also, you know, the, the storage shed would be considered normal, I would assume, for a residential area. But the dumpster, I have no idea why two adults and one child need a dumpster, economic or not. I just know that when I plan to build my beautiful dream home and live here, I don't want to come out my front door and look at this. It's clearly a paving business. The few times I've been there, I have witnessed employees driving up in their vehicles. I have witnessed employees driving up in their work vehicles and getting in their personal vehicles and driving away. I am now afraid to drive up my road for fear that a dump truck will be coming down it and maybe not pay attention and I'll end up in an accident. It's, it's ugly, it's a business. 
it's disrespectful. I just spoke to my realtor this morning telling him why we're here, and I asked him what this does to my property value, and he busted out laughing. And he said, it clearly devalues your property. I said, will we be able to sell it? And he said, not for what you got for it. So I'm concerned about what that does. I'm seriously reconsidering whether or not I would even build here because I'm not interested in looking at this. Now I'd like to bring up my fiance, Mark Yegi, and let him say a few words. Okay. I do have one question. Um, on what date was the property oh, I'm sorry. transacted? We took these yesterday between three and four o'clock. I would say. No. On what date was the property transacted? What what date? Oh, did you I, I closed on December eighth of two thousand and eight. And could you show us on this oh, sure. which property is yours? Mm -hmm. This is Hidden Falls Drive. Mm -hmm. This large vacant piece of four point seven acres is mine, and that's the three, and that's Mr. Ryan. Okay. And where the this. The head of Hidden Falls, where you took this picture, is where? It I'm is. down at the end of the road. Okay, there's Hidden there's, Falls. I'm right. at the end of the road okay, where so Newstock okay. New meets it. So there's a number of properties no. that use hidden, this single lane drive. I believe drive. 15, something like 15. Okay. Did everybody see that, what we were talking about? Okay. 15 properties, okay. Hello. Good afternoon. Does the staff have questions before I commence? Before you commence, does the board have any more questions of Mr. Mr. Weimer? All right. Ma'am, your the attachment to your exhibits sets forth the definition with respect to home occupation, and I believe your your contentions are. Tell me what your contentions are that Mr. Raines is in violation of with regard to a home occupation. I would consider a home occupation to be something that's not visible outside the home. Um, someone doing day trading from their office or something small like that that's not an impact to the overall residential area and that is not unsightly and not a huge paved parking lot at which he parks five large vehicles pulling trailers. Okay. Now, your photographs, I believe, evidence at most three vehicles with business signage on them. Is that correct? Five. There were, there's a white pickup truck. There are three dark green pickup trucks that I've seen there. There's also a dump truck. Okay, would you point to the photograph that establishes what you're speaking of? Well, the white pickup truck is on photograph four. You can see it between the two personal vehicles and the green pickup truck. There's a green pickup truck this side of the dump truck, also marked A-quality paving. There's a dump truck marked A-quality paving. On page on page 9, on the other side of the, of the dump truck towing the very heavy equipment, paving equipment on it is another green truck marked A quality with a, a large trailer and in front of that further down by the shed is another green pickup truck marked A quality paving. Here's four and here is nine. So four shows you to the pickup truck and here is nine, the other side of the pickup truck. Let me ask you if the dump truck is depicted in the nine it is. Well, there are three vehicles in photograph four, of which one has a large trailer. But on nine, on the other side of the dump truck, there are two additional trucks that say A quality paving. So there are four pickup trucks and one dump truck. Were these photographs taken at the same time? Yes, they were. We just drove further down the road. So here are one, two trucks, and a dump truck white, green, a dump truck. On the other side of the dump truck is a truck and a truck. That would be five. It's still there and it's still very unattractive. 
Now, with respect, to with respect to traffic, have you conducted any traffic count of vehicles coming in and out? No, I, I don't live here, but the, the two times I've been here, I have encountered one of their employees and had to pull off the road in a private vehicle. Private Thank goodness vehicle. it wasn't a dump truck. Okay, do you have any evidence that, that Mr. Raines exits and re-enters the premises with his vehicles on more than one occasion during any one given day? I don't live there. I'm not sure. I can only go by what my neighbors have told me. Do you know of any process activities that are being carried upon on the property? I only know that one time I came up there, he had his equipment running, and it was very loud, and there was a lot of smoke coming from it. Okay. Would that be the time that he was paving his parking area? No, sir, it wasn't. It was subsequent to that. Subsequent to that. And what, if anything, what type of activity did you observe on that occasion? Um, I observed several employees going to and from vehicles. There was a vehicle running. There was smoke coming from it. They were... I, don't, I have no idea what they were doing. I was standing on my property. Okay. I have nothing further. Thank you. Does the board have any further questions for Ms. Um, yes, I have a quick question. This road here, is that Hidden Lane Road? Well, the road is to the left of it. That's their front yard that's been paved. That is the road, the lighter pavement? Right, that's the road. Correct. Is, is the one lane road. Now... Well, I, I would like to add that when we, when we looked at this property and fell in love with it, one of our concerns was that MSD was at the end of it. They were in the process of putting in the new lines right across the creek. But we had been, um, been told that they were basically not, not evacuating that, that area, but they were making it a lift station. And it was still going to have some equipment coming and going, but it was going to be minimal. I was, I was okay with that because the zoning was there before we moved in, and I understood that. My concern is this is zoned R1, and this is an industrial paving business, which is not a home occupation, with a lot of vehicles, and it's very unattractive, and it's, it's a residence. And I'm just asking that you, you, you please give us some, some assistance in returning it back to its original beauty and making it our neighborhood. Mr. Barnwell, do you have any, do you want to cross-examine any of the statements that were made? I do not. Um, I just have a couple of questions. You said you did research on the Department of uh, Secretary of the State uh, website. Yes. Do just you have the, the name that that corporation was registered under? It was uh, registered under A, Quality Paving. Um, Robert Raines is the shareholder, registered agent, and principal, um, principal owner of the company. It is the business and mailing address of 133 Shelba Drive. It's, However, it's that address is actually registered to a Matthew and Laura Eggleston. By registered, do you mean they're the, the property owners? On the county's owners? website of that address, correct. Okay. And do you know if that corporation is still active with the Secretary of State? It did say active on the website this morning. That's all the questions I have. Uh, I have a problem with that. Okay. Um, then when you check the uh, Secretary of State's website, uh, what documents did you specifically look at? Um, we, we researched the business A, quality paving. We okay. put it into their, the search engine, and it came up with that name. Did you, did you, have, did you look at a copy of the Articles of Incorporation? I did not, but my fi fiancé might have. Okay. Did you look at the annual report? No. Okay. Do you know, according to the annual report on file with the Secretary of State's office, what the registered, who is the registered agent and at what address the registered agent is for the corporation? I just know that the cover page for A Quality Paving on the North Carolina Department of State shows A Quality Paving is owned and operated by Robert Raines at 133 Shelba Lane. But did you specifically look at the last filed annual report? No. Did you look at the articles of organization no. or the articles of incorporation? Thank you. I have a 
uh, sure. procedural question for Josh, both Josh and you. Are we, uh, is this technically an appeal to a previous decision by the zoning administrator? Correct. The notice of violation constitutes an, a, a decision on, on my behalf. Okay. So in the ordinance, we, we are, what's applicable in terms of uh, our powers and duties is under section 78623, which is appeals and applications, right? Yeah. It's, we're not under statutory vested right provisions or... listening to the testimony, you're going to make decisions on witness credibility, facts, and determine whether or you're either going to affirm Josh's decision or you're going to say that he didn't have the reason to do it, no return. Okay. And the decision at hand, I, I will state, references only whether or not this is a, a home occupation. Right. Okay. And, and just to clarify that, your decision is that it's... I, I, as I stated earlier it's a there was a notice of violation issued based on on photographic evidence so based on that evidence so you're um, saying it is a business occupation it, it, it I, my statement was it did not fit within the guidelines of uh, home occupation based on the pictures submitted and statements made by neighbors um, I did bring it to the Board of Adjustment because as identified there's some issues of, of ambiguity and we did have trouble as a department um, getting a coherent body of evidence other than the, the picture submitted by Ms. Weinreich. Okay. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. O'Connor, and other members of the panel. Uh, my name is Mark Yegge, Y-E-G-G-E. -E. Uh, Ms. Weinreich and I purchased the property in late 2008, and I'm just going to be very brief, but my, uh, my testimony is really more to the interpretation of the Buncombe County Zoning Ordinance as, as we have, have seen it, and I'm sure you know it, so I'll, at the risk of being redundant, I'll, uh, I'll keep it brief. Um, on the last page, you have a copy of, of the Zoning Ordinance. I want to object. I think this is more in the form of a legal argument, which is the latter part of this procedure. Mr. Yegi has, has factual evidence. I think that would be appropriate, but not a legal argument. I, I, I would tend to agree with that, but this isn't the time of day. Yes, facts as to why this is or is not a home occupation. That's that's sort of the that's where we are at this stage. Okay, okay sure. I'll, I'll, I'm using this as a guide to kind of well, go through. If you the have path. facts, you can testify as to you know your personal opinion as to why you think this is not a home occupation. But sure. in fact, it can't be an argument as to, to you know how the board should interpret the ordinance. Okay, so you'll make the argument about how the board should. I'm not making any argument. I'm the board's attorney. I'm trying to make sure that everybody. Okay, so if I could ask you, if I could ask then, who makes the, who, who makes the panel aware of the specific uh, section of home occupation that they're going to be deciding? They've already been given that by Josh in his presentation, and it will be up to Josh. I believe we understand that. Okay, great. All right, great. Then, then I won't take your time on that. I would just say that, uh, that several times when we've come up to visit the property, we've, you know, when, when Ms. Weinreich was telling you this is an, uh, an uphill blind road, that if a dump truck is coming down, a dump truck cannot stop in time um, to, to put on the brakes and, let, and, and, and get out of the way. Uh, somebody has to move, and, uh, and I think common sense would prevail, at least from our opinion and my factual opinion, that, that a dump truck is not something you're going to go to the local McDonald's and drive through and order a hamburger, whether it's registered in a personal name or not. I would recommend, I would suggest that this is, a, uh, is not a personal vehicle, regardless of how it's reg registered on the tax rolls. Um, and the same thing uh, would be on the other vehicles as well. Uh, dumpsters, dump trucks, uh, those big yellow asphalt paving, paving machines we have witnessed on the property and understood that if this is a, um, a use like a tax accountant or a bookkeeper or something like that, that's a home occupation. Uh, this we don't believe is a home occupation. We ask that you side with, your, uh, that's, with that's Mr. O'Connor. <laughs> you're making an argument. I, I understand. Okay. Your facts about what you saw is fine, but I would disregard. Yeah, we're giving you a lot of latitude. All right, thanks. You understand okay. what you're saying. Then, then really, that's that's it. We just we just witnessed very very much business activity um, from our perspective, and ask that you consider that. Thank you very much. Hold on. Hold on. You okay. Consider. Mr. Farmer, do you have any? I do not. 
I just have a, a question at this time. Um, I think this is to clarify for the board because in, in the statement that you have from me, um, it gets a little bit ambiguous as to who owns the property. Um, it's owned under Reams Creek LLC. If you could explain that relationship and how that. Sure, the property is owned in an LLC. Uh, that's how our attorneys have advised us to do that. Uh, Ms. Weinreck and I are the, are the, um, are the primary owners of the proper, property. So yeah, it's just a legal entity that we own the property in. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Who would like to testify next? I, I believe uh, next is Miss Sherry Levin if she's present today. Just to clarify the procedure, Ms. Levin, after you state your name and spell your name for um, Jillian, if you could just start in on um, factual findings of why you feel this is outside of home occupation. Um, I'm Sherry Levin, S-H-A-R-I, Levin, L-E-A-V-E-N. Um, I'm here today to just support uh, my fellow neighbors in the statement of this being a usage outside what I consider R1. observations in the last 10 days of the comings and goings of the traffic, the impact on our lane, pursuant to the part that, that talks here about no traffic shall be generated by such home occupation in greater volume than would normally be expected. This, um, these vehicles, I don't know if you need copies of this. If you would, you need to, you have multiple copies No, of I that. just made one. Okay. But you'll be you're more than welcome to make copies. We can make more copies, but first thing you need to, anybody that has any evidence or pictures or anything you're going to show, you need to show it to Mr. Barnwell um, prior to submitting it to the board. Are those just your notes? These are, yes. Well, they're um, observations that I've okay, made. Okay, but, but are they things that you witnessed personally? Personally with, witnessed, yes. Okay. So and you I can did note to everything absolutely, on that paper. and I did note it. Note the dates that I was not available for observations on when they left the property. I mean, if she's, if you have any objection to that, I have no objection. Okay, so we'll make copies of that and send that into the record. But if you could just testify to what you heard me need your notes to testify. No, 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 no. That's it. That's okay. all. I just that, that's just my addition to um, everything that has been already stated. And I um, am one of the original complainants on this um, situation. Can you state for the record what you actually saw? I, no, this is, you, well, you I, know, you're, you're talking in, in very, very general terms. Did you see 10 vehicles in an hour? Okay, or? yes. Um, in the, on the mornings when I made these observations, um, the, the gentlemen would come in in their vehicles. They would pick up these large pieces of equipment, the dump truck with this piece of equipment on the, on the back of it, another gray truck with a piece of equipment on the back of it, and another truck would follow that out every morning. Sometimes they come back midday. Um, you know, sometimes they come back mid-afternoon. The, the times vary, so that's why I did observations for the last 10 days to kind of be a little bit more specific. It's, it's very difficult to be specific. Um, I don't live in my house 24 hours of the day. So I can just speak to the times when I've actually observed this. I have had, upon occasion, had to pull off the road and let these vehicles pass me, which means I had to go into the ditch. Fortunately, I've never met them on the hill going up, so it hasn't been an issue, but um, I foresee a lot of problems this winter with the ice that accumulates on our lane. I don't know how in the world anyone would get out of the way of something that large coming down that hill if it were icy. Okay. Is, it, is this a private road? It's a private road. It's a driveway, basically. And I will state for the chair that we've had, uh, personally, I've had difficulty um, identifying the ultimate owner of the road. Um, that would be up to a closing attorney or someone more well-versed in title research than myself. Um, I did find the original plat for the MSD property um, when it was the Woodfin treatment plant um, as depicting the road right away as, as part of, of that that property. Um, well this 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 from the photographs is a paved road and looks like it's in reasonably good condition. Somebody must own it. 
Fifteen years ago, we were all, the neighborhood got together with MSD and we had a road maintenance agreement drawn up, which gave us the rights to maintain the road, use the road, and share in it in e with equal responsibility with MSD. That is my understanding is how it still stands. And Mr. Chair, I would say that the road maintenance agreement and how the roads maintained really isn't an issue. The traffic yep. count obviously is and how, how many vehicles are coming to and from and, and that type of thing, but really, I understand, but I was just trying to get a feel of the, of the situation of what she was observing here. And I know that I'm not supposed to be addressing the situation with the lane, but it is a one road lane, yeah. one vehicle lane. And that is a big impact yeah, well, in our that's, residential that's neighborhood. That's out of our purview there. That's, I know, that's but a, just so you're aware of that. And that's basically what I had to say. And these vehicles, it, 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 are they, we are talking about the same, same pass vehicles. of vehicles. Mm -hmm. the, the one you saw was leaving in the morning. Coming back in the back afternoon. They're the same vehicles. Same vehicles. Vehicles is plural. How many make up your plural? Um, normally three. But they vary, depending, I'm sure, on the, on the situation of the job. You know, what goes out that day is to be relevant to whatever is happening with their job. But generally it's three. And I will note for the board, um, now that Ms. Levin is, has testified, um, in the memorandum that I wrote to the board regarding this notice of violation, she's identified as complainant A. Um, I refrained from identifying her since I didn't have any written communication or her permission otherwise, but now at this time, um, since she's presented her evidence, um, that helps to correspond with her testimony. Does, does the board have any more questions? Yes, I, I, I have are these the same? Have you looked at the photographs mm -hmm. that, that she presented? They are the same there? vehicles. Are these the same vehicles that yes. she enumerated? Yes. The white truck and the blue with pickup and the The white truck pickups? with the big piece of equipment on the back and two smaller trucks with paving equipment and attached to them as well. And these vehicles have signs on the side? Yes, they do. Enumerating what the business was? A quality paving, yes. All right, any other questions? Yeah, just for clarification purposes, it's your testimony that there are three vehicles that exit the property daily or almost daily? I said that it varies from day to day, but in general, when they go out, three will go out. Sometimes it's just one, sometimes it's two. I don't know how a paving business runs, but that's been my observation. Is it ever more than three? Um, not that I've observed, but then this is observations been made in the summer with the leaves on yeah. the trees. During the day, have you observed the vehicles returning and exiting a gang? Yes. Okay, how often does that occur? Well, if you'll refer to, let's see which day was it, on the, um, on the 10th, the vehicles went out in the morning and they came back at 5 or 6 and then they left again at 7.30. Okay. So oftentimes more than once. Okay. How many vehicles exited the property on your first observation on the 10th? It probably was two that morning. Okay. How many vehicles did, did you observe returning? Well, the dump truck came back. And I can't be at the window all the time, but I can hear some of these things. So the dump truck come back, and I saw that, and then it went out again at 7.30. The dump truck exited again at 7.30? Yes. <clears throat> okay, so you saw two vehicles exit in the morning, at least. The dump truck returning, it did, and, then and it the went dump truck again. then exiting again. Right. Total of uh, four vehicular traffics during the day. That was just one day. Thank you. Miss <coughs> Levin, I just have a question. Um, in these observations that you made um, during this time, um, did you specifically separate out any traffic that was generated um, in conjunction with MSD? Like, were these? Oh no, these aren't MSD trucks. I know pretty much to the time when MSD comes in and out. Okay. 
I'm going to hand you photographs and ask you, first of all, do you recognize any of the vehicles in those photographs? I don't have my glasses Sir, can on. You grab the microphone? The question is, do you recognize any of the vehicles in the photographs I've handed to you? Not any of the... No. No. Okay, with respect to MSD traffic, how frequently is MSD exit and okay. enter and exit the property? This, these, were these taken during MSD's renovation of their property? Because I wasn't here that winter. Let me ask you your observations with regard to MSD traffic. Mm -hmm. Does MSD on a daily basis enter and exit this property using this road? Yes. They, ex they come in once in the morning in a small truck, and they leave once, or they come in once in the afternoon. Once in a while, they have to bring in a piece of equipment for mowing that property, but basically it's just the two trips in during the day. Have you ever observed tractor trailers being operated by MSD on this when driveway? They were, when they were re re renovating their property down there, yes. When they were taking down the buildings, of course. Excuse me, how, how is, excuse me, how is uh, MSD's activity relevant? Yeah, well, well, what's the relevance? I, I think I'll, I'll have this, I mean, as I said, you all can, that's, that's a decision. Yeah. What, what is the relevance of what this is relevance? other yeah. traffic? The relevancy is their concern is over, over the uh, traffic and the dump trucks, and, and this, this road is in use by MSD with much bigger vehicles than what Mr. Raines utilizes. I don't want to testify in this matter. I had not intended to ask questions of this witness, however, the board uh, asked the question with regard to MSD traffic, and I think that opened the door. I, I, but I, 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 don't I think have the no board asked any question about MSD traffic. Mm -hmm. Board's right. attorney. We didn't. I didn't ask the Mr. No. But that's all right. Now, I just think that the question is, is I think that if, uh, if they're trying to show that other trucks use the road. Yeah, but, you know, to put, put a random group of photos up there and say there's some more traffic, Oh. You, you have to put the complete picture I, I of all the traffic. I specified that, that um, MSD does use the road and they do come in once no. in the morning. Yeah. And, and my feeling is MSD is, is not the home business we're looking at. Right. No. That's correct. My, just to clarify for the board, my, my question um, was to make sure that we were not counting um, any residual traffic from MSD I think against the his. Was to show that these trucks were proper identification of yes. this business's trucks. Okay. Okay, we got it. Got it. Yes. Is we there got anything it. else? We understand that. Mr. Barlow? Go ahead. Okay. Anything I think else? you're done. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, Josh, what else do you have? Is there anybody else that wants to? I can just take a minute. At this time, we're um, looking for people that are speaking in favor of the appeal. Well, or just to give testimony and yeah. to support it. I'm a neighbor, so I'm going to just... Uh, yeah. Yeah. He's speaking in favor of the appeal? Well, he's, he's giving evidence. No, I'm... I'm You're asking? I think he's going to testify answer. as to what he's observed in terms of the home occupation. Okay, sit down. Give us your name. Hey, there you are. Hello, I'm uh, Mark Girardi, and uh, we, my wife and I and family, own a residence at 93 Hidden Falls. So, okay. um, Girardi, I'm sorry, G-I-R-A-R-D-I. Very simple. No, sorry. Um, if you look on your plat, you'll see we're up and above um, yeah. the property in question. Um, I have not uh, taken, um, I have not been afforded the time uh, to document um, activity uh, per se, exact amount of trucks going in and out. Um, but it's very obvious. It's, it's a paving company. Uh, I think one terminology is vehicle versus machinery. Uh, I'm not a paver, but I do know that there's more than just um, road vehicles involved in, um, in paving activity in machinery aspects. And there's some of that as well. So there's the, the aesthetic impact as well as the aromatic impact, if you will, of, of uh, smelling asphalt. Um, and, and the related things, things involved. So um, traffic on the road is kind of irrelevant because it, it's tough on all of us regardless. Single lane road, um, 
you run into cars. Um, do you but, access your property, excuse me, it, by Hidden Falls? Yes, Hidden yes, Falls? yes. Yeah, I, I drive up and, and we'll occasionally see a neighbor, you know, coming down. You have to accommodate because it's a small road. Um, but the, uh, the question is, is the use of the property. And um, it, it, it's functioning as a business, in my opinion, and that's, that's really just what I wanted to, to state. Uh, it's, it's got names on the trucks. I, I have no disrespect for, for anybody or him or how he's, he's doing it, but it's, they're coming in and out and cleaning the trucks, and occasionally I'll see them when I get home at night and hear the, hear the activity. Um, but that's how it's, it's, it's functioning. So that's, that's my two cents. Uh, Mr. Girardi, if, if you could just clarify um, what you see on, on the property. Um, well, <clears throat> occasionally we'll see the dump truck come in with machinery behind it, um, and I'll observe. I can't really see through the trees because we're kind of up, up and above, but there'll be some, some um, smoke and steam and things rising, so I don't know if they're cleaning the trucks or, or prepping for the next day. I don't know how the whole functionality is, but it's, it's obviously maintenance of the machinery and just, you know, related activities. In your general view, does, does, does that dump truck and machinery arrive at the end of every day? Is it, does um, it park there daily? I couldn't speak exactly every day, but uh, it, it appears to be functioning as somewhat of a, a business uh, based upon job. You know, they, they have three jobs this week. Maybe it rolls twice, and they don't have a job the next week, and it doesn't roll. But it's fairly consistent on, on the in and out. You do observe these these trucks, the ones that have been described before, with the signs on the side identifying to this particular firm. Oh yes. And going. Yes, and, and like I say, regardless of the traffic, which is is a challenge anyway on a single lane road, it's just yes, the trucks with the logos um, located there, leaving, coming back. Yes. Approximately, I know where it's kind of situated. Approximately, how far are you? Like, just can you kind of like a distance? Um, as I pull into my driveway, uh, <clears throat> then my house sits off of Hidden Falls, and then you have to go on down um, approximately eighth of a mile to get to this location. And the noise generated from there, you hear at that distance? Yes, and it's not a every night, 120 decibels, but it is there. It's it's. It's commercial in nature. In other words, and it's not residential. What kind of noises do you hear? Well, clanking and banging, and you know, trucks on you know as they couple the trucks and do you know do their truck things. You know, I I, I don't know how asphalt machinery works, but I mean, it's just it's a business. Is it, it's it's very evident, and if we had the, the cameras, it, it seems to be functioning. So. Does the truck does the dump truck have a backup beeper? Um, I can't say 100 percent yes up. or no, but. Um, it's it's a fairly large dump truck. My name is Billy West, W-E-S-T. I own the property at 101 Hidden Falls, which you can check your map is directly below Mr. Rains. I do not personally live there. I have my 80-year-old mother and my 57-year-old brother live there. They've been there since December of 2000, 2000. I've met Mr. Rains. It took me a while to meet him. I have no problem with his business, his vehicles. I have investigated on my own when I started hearing these complaints and got the letters from the participants mailed to my home on Newstock Road. So I investigated on my own using my brother and my mother as investigators. And as to the noise, the smell, the traffic, and they reported that they have no problem with it at all. They hear. Wait, wait a minute. You, 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 you didn't see these things or hear them then. I'm going off of what my brother and my mother have told me, and they lived within. They live within. I, I I'd say 100 say that, feet of them. I, I think that he, he can testify to his personal uh, impressions, but he is that is hearsay. Yeah. <laughs> told to him. So I, 
as I said, it's up to the board as to how much weight you're going to put on that. Um, that information. That I mean, he could still testify, I would think, or he could still. But I do. It is hearsay, and it's up to you as to how you want to weigh that hearsay. I'm in and out of there constantly because I have to check on my mother. Have you seen any of these trucks and so forth on the road when you're yes. in and out? Okay. But more than likely, I see MSD or I meet one of the people that. 11 households that are there. Would you say on, on, on your trips in and out of there, how often do you meet, meet one of the vehicles from this firm? It's very seldom that I meet his vehicles. Okay. It's, 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 pardon? What is, the, what is the time frame that you generally That I'm generally there, it's usually around anywhere from noon till four or five in the evening depending on what my mother needs. If she calls me and needs something then, that my brother cannot provide, then I go over there and it could be any time. But other than that, usually it's if I meet traffic and I have met them on the hill that they're talking about, and it was a very, very large dump truck compared to his, I had no problem getting out of its way because you cannot. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's fine. But it was MSDs. It's not him. And... I just don't understand the problem here. He does not run. I don't see him running the business itself from that location. Yes, he has equipment there, but he does not run the business from that location. The business is off okay. over there. I don't think you're in a position to, to say that. Okay. I guess unless somebody's got a question, I guess I can't say anything else. No, you, know. well, it's, it's, you can testify to your personal opinion or what you see, what you think, what you it, my personal, my, you want my you personal give an argument? You can give what you've witnessed. Okay. Yeah. What, what you've seen or what you've heard. What I've witnessed is these plain complaints, and this is my personal opinion, my investigation, what I've come up with. The complaints that were registered against him stemmed from him meeting certain individuals and making what I thought was a correct response, and they got offended. So all of a sudden, now these complaints start arriving. Like I said, I have no complaint. I should be the one that would complain because his property has impacted on mine. But I worked it out with him instead of running to but from you your, or anybody from your else. Viewpoint, from your personal experience on the property you own there, you have no objections. Is that what you're None saying? None whatsoever. But it, it, in order for me to get some, some weight on this, it seems like you've had some conversations that have led you to these perceptions. Who I've had conversations, yes. I, my, conversations that's how you investigate with? something. You talk to people. Who have these conversations? Have they been with the neighbors? Have they been? Who is, who's the conversation? I've talked to some of the neighbors further up. Uh, uh, the Buchanans, for one. Unfortunately, they're not here. There's two sisters. One of them's an invalid. I've talked to them. My wife has talked to them. Uh, I've That's talked it? to Mr. Rain several times okay. because of the condition of my his property inf influencing my property. Where is your Even property? Served. Yes. Pardon? Where? Right there, right here. One on one's just below him. Uh, right. right below. No, no, um, below. There you go. Right there. Okay. When you talked to Mr. Rains that you just referred to, what did he tell you? He, he referred me to the complaints because I was coming up there to talk to him about the situation in my Can property. Can you be more specific? He told me about uh, the complaints of uh, one of the neighbors coming down there in her vehicle when he was first doing the construction and that uh, he informed her that she really needed to keep the vehicle out of there so that it wouldn't get damaged because of the vehicles there. That's when the complaints first started, from what I understand. And then this last one was the uh, individuals with the property across from him offering to sell him an acre of it. He offered the price. I wouldn't have went that price, but uh, she got offended evidently from the price he quoted her. And I've built houses here for okay. up until two years ago, eight years ago. There's no way you can build a house on that property. No way. You spoke of an impact on your property? Yes, his property did impact on mine. The, when he brought in his soil, and the spring rains he hit, before it could compact, it was coming down the ravine, the hill, and washing over my property. What was the resolution for that? 
He had contacted, I, he put up silt screens, several of them. I put up bales of straw that helped the situation, but for him to stop all that water coming down Hidden Falls on his property, which now was ending up on my property, he had to pay it. And he did, he built the berm. Since he's done that, I have had no problems whatsoever with his road runoff. Was there a permit pulled for the fill on the property? The only permit we have in our packets for replacement of a mobile home. Correct. Um, there, there was no need for that. Um, I, I have checked in with stormwater and erosion, erosion control. Um, for a residential site, there's an acre threshold that has to be met, and, and his site's only acre. an acre. So. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Thank Thanks. you. I'm Ava Green, I-V-A-G-R-E-E-N. I've lived at the place that I live now. On, I'm the first drive, 49 Hidden Falls Drive on this drive on the right. I've lived there 34 years. And this is what I've observed. I work for the school system, so I'm not always at home. But during the summer, I was at home. And in the mornings, there would be three trucks that would go out. And it seemed to go with somewhat like the weather. I guess that's the way paving companies do. <laughs> Three trucks go out, and behind those three trucks is a trailer, and it pulls paving equipment. Those trucks will come back in in the afternoon when they go out. Um, one evening, and I can't, I don't have documentation to tell you this, but one evening the dump truck, which is one of those trucks that pulls a trailer with that equipment, went in and out maybe five times. I'm assuming that he's working on those uh, on the equipment at the time. So what I have seen is trucks up to three at a time with the trailer on the back with paving equipment on it going in and that's what comes back in in the evenings so and these trucks are the ones we've been talking about the, with the signs paving. on the side right. same trucks and that's what I see with these two eyes trucks go out with trailers on the back with equipment on it and then they come back in and what what is your objection or uh, observation of these trucks you're just driving down the road and you're just observing you've seen no them? before these trucks can go out the employees that are going to drive them have to come in they go down and get in these trucks and then the big trucks go out then when they bring those trucks big trucks in in the afternoons those big trucks come in and then those employees go back out so that's numerous vehicles on our driveway which is that one lane driveway your your primary objection or ob observation is the volume here there's right. a large volume of traffic on that road that I'm not supposed to business. talk about right excuse me could you um, could you tell me approximately how many employees you think you see in these trucks yes because whenever the trucks go in um, there will be at least three cars that will go back <laughs> out but sometimes there's a um, a lady that comes in she must pick up one of the employees we will bring that person in and then she'll come back in the afternoon and pick them up so it will be however many vehicles go in and out and mr. Raines has a little pickup truck too that has a quality paving and that's the one that he usually drives that I've seen him driving okay so um, your estimate of employees could you just give a guess I would think that he has three employees okay. thank you this is just from observation. All right. Other questions or comments? Um, I have a, a couple of statements to make at this time. Um, oh, hold on. If there are arguments? No, it's just factual. Is this more evidence? Okay. All right. There was, there was some mention of a, a letter that was circulated uh, among the neighbors. Um, I've, this is, I've heard of that letter. Um, my understanding is the neighbors were informed that we had sided with one side or the other um, in this particular matter. Um, I just want to clarify um, for any further proceedings that the county doesn't side with an individual um, once they make a complaint we side with whatever the the county zoning ordinance states so I just wanted to make sure that that was clear um, in your packet there's a packet that contains several emails it's um, 
two emails to a page. Um, there was a request uh, uh, to our office to provide the, the names of the Board of Adjustment members. Um, and following that request, you as members of the Board of Adjustment received advice from our office to make sure not to engage in any communication with that. So I just want to make sure um, prior to this proceeding to the vote that that evidence is entered and any members declare any ex parte communications that they may have had as a result of, of that email or communication from that individual. Um, I'll also mention that when I was looking into the road and this, this use, um, when they, the complaint originated very early on, um, I did attempt to find out if there was any restricted covenants on any of the properties um, or, or the road itself um, because the, the best manner would be able to, to solve this civilly um, since there is some ambiguity in the zoning ordinance and, and I wasn't able to find any kind of civil relief like that. That's a response to a request for information in the June 17, okay. um, 2011 uh, letter issued by myself. I have an August 2nd, 2000, uh, August 2nd, 2011 notice of violation follow-up. I have an August 16th notice of violation. And I have an August 29, 2011, looks like the appeal of your decision by Mr. Raines and Ms. Guthrie. Dated June 7, 2011, and it looks like there's one, two, three, four, five on the first page. One, a uh, bunch on all right, those emails. Right, I guess that I will just consider this document to be a packet of email correspondence. I have here a zoning certificate of compliance for 111 Hidden Falls Drive issued on what appears to be December 28th, 2010. I have photographs submitted to planning dated June 28th, 2010. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six photographs in that packet. I have photographs from May 25th, 2011, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve photographs. I have photographs from June 27th, 2011, for 111 Hidden Falls, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine photographs in that packet. I have in that packet photographs submitted by Robert Raines in response to the June 17, 2011 correspondence. And I have one that would be two pictures. I have pictures submitted by Brian Greiner and Jackie Weinrich, and that would be two pictures dated uh, June 3, 2011. 
four, oh, it's double-sided, okay, four pictures, thank you. I have tax records uh, for vehicles belonging to Mr. Raines, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine different tax records. All right, next thing I have are the photographs submitted by Ms. Weinrich, and I don't know how many there are, 11 photographs. And then I have the Miss Levin's traffic count, and that would be a memorandum that consists of two pages. Anything else that I'm missing? In addition, I'll also submit um, the evidence just related to traffic counts. I have two um, studies, one from the Community and Environmental Defense Services and one from the Journal of Transportation Engineering. Can you submit those to Mr. Barnwell to make sure? Mr. Barnwell, do you have, besides the objections that you noted to those uh, two pictures, do you have any other objections to the documents that are being submitted as evidence? Yeah, and I have the opportunity to review the traffic. Okay. Uh, uh, and just for your clarification, Mr. Barnwell, those two documents um, are just an engineering baseline that, that set um, residential trip information or residential trip counts at approximately 10 per day as being an accepted average. You want to hold off on? I mean, if you just want to summarize, would it just be easier if, if Mr. O'Connor just summarizes and states that, you know, based on his research, 10 trips is the, is the standard for residential areas? I, I have no objection to stipulating that the Community and Environmental Defense Service document that he has has a, uh, a volume of uh, 10 trips per day in a single family. Yeah, I'll make that stipulation. Okay. So we then won't need other than that that you're wishing to. No, the two documents combined just further if that. If we stipulated to that, we don't need to put those on the record. Okay. I don't know if you want to take a short break and then we can start in on Mr. Barnwell's yeah. case in chief. I, w I have a, a, just a couple more questions uh, oh, or observations sure. regarding the photos and then let's do take a, a short okay, break. Okay, that'll be great. In between. Uh, Josh, in, in, in the package here that you gave us, the photos on the first page, because we have so many, it says May 25th, 2011, 111 Hidden Falls Dives. In that series of photos, that very first one, it, it's, it, it's a photograph of a, an asphalt road, and on the side of that road, it looks like a large core sample there of asphalt. Is that a core sample of asphalt? I'm not able to testify that to that. I can try to find a, a larger oh, no, that's picture. I believe that's the parking lot. That's not the road. Well, this is right here. You're, you're not looking at the same. That's the edge of the parking lot. Is that the edge of yeah, the parking lot? The parking okay. Lot. That's the edge yeah. of his parking lot. I believe that's lot. the, the, Regarding the photograph. I'm, the, the relevancy I had, it, it, is, that a, is that an asphalt core sample, large one? Okay. I have I have one more question too, just before we recess. Bear with me. I'm not I'm not done yet. Okay. Oh no, that's all right. I'm I'm just <laughs> trying to make sure that we get at least get the documents admitted to evidence. That's okay, all. There, there's another photograph in there uh, uh, showing a gate. This is a, a, a steel gate, it's been painted orange, quite rusty. But on this gate, there is a sign that says danger. No trespassing. That's the gate to the MSD property, Mr. Chair. To the MSD? Yes, sir. Okay. And there's another uh, a gate that's chained. I think it's a gate that shows a fence post with the barbed wire and then a gate with the chain that's, on it and a lock. That's that same gate. That's MSD. 
Correct. And, okay. and the, the reason that's, that's relevant in this particular um, case is there were some accusations um, and some conversation about Mr. Rain's parking his, his vehicles on MSD's property. I had Mr. Peterson go and investigate that specifically, and as you can see, the gate's locked, so he wouldn't have access to park on that property. Okay. Okay, I was just trying to determine if it's relevant to the property we're concerned with here. Yeah, it's immediately adjacent. Immediately adjacent. All right. Okay, I think that's the photographic questions I had. John? I have one question. We got a property card for the property in question, 111 Hidden Falls. Is that, is that the address? It's, it's a property card for 111 Hidden Falls. Is that the address of the... Subject property, correct. Right. Okay. I, I would that wasn't in the, the documents I had. So. No, you would have to look at those separately. Did you, did, was that presented? Did you? Or, oh, so we have it's it. part of our packet. Part, part, of, our part of the packet. Part of the packet. Mr. Barnwell, do you have any objection no, no, no. to the property card? Okay. No objection. Um, it says the owners are Robert Rains and Pam Guthrie. It says a different address is there as there as the address on the property card for for I guess for a mailing address. So has it been established in evidence that this property is actually a full, the full-time residence of the applicant? Do we know? I have no other indication otherwise. I have done research to find out if there's other property owned by Mr. Raines, but all indications from my conversation with Mr. Raines, the Buncombe County um, tax records and conversations with the neighbors is that he is living there. Okay. So how do we rectify the that there's a different address on the right. property card. That's a situation I run into daily. Um, normally when I issue out a notice of violation, there's a 50% chance that it will not okay. go to the property owner. Um, and you'll see that if you look at the other property cards for the surrounding um, property owners, a lot of those do not correspond to the, the property location. It's a pretty common situation. Okay. Off the record, I can answer the question. That would be the property address that was taken from the deed at the time of the transfer, and that was not Mr. Guthrie's permanent residence at that time. At that time, the property consisted of a rather rundown home, which has since been removed and replaced by Mr. Rains. It's a new dwelling, which is his primary residence. Is this the point, time and place to point out the fact that the definition of a home occupancy relies pretty heavily on the applicant actually living in the in the building and that, that, that they, unsubstantiated and occupancy is relevant? Well, they haven't had a chance to present okay. their case in chief okay. yet. I mean, we just go where, where staff presents their case and okay. cases so there were so many witnesses that wanted. We kind of, we're kind of going in reverse order, but they, they obviously have a chance to present their evidence to okay. establish those facts. Okay. 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 Right. And I will say that um, it's my recollection that um, Mr. Peterson, on the course of in his inspection, did encounter Mr. Raines at the residence. Did or didn't? Did. Did? Okay. All right. Does, does that bring us to a break point? If you want to, yes, ma'am. All right. Let's take a 10 minute break and come back here. It's uh, Mr. Chair, we, we'll need a motion to uh, accept the, the evidence yeah. that was presented. Oh, well, all right. We can. Uh, let's see. Would someone like to make that motion that we accept the evidence presented to this time? Yeah. Is that how we delineate the county's evidence? That yeah. you the county's the evidence. County evidence on the I'll make that motion to accept the county's evidence presented at this time. I'll second. Okay. There's been a motion to accept the county's evidence as presented up to this point in time. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Oh, one, one just quick thing, Board of Adjustment.